Hello, how you doing? Welcome again to another edition of While You Are Single TV. I'm glad that you joined the program again today and thank you as well for sharing with your friends. If you missed any of the previous episodes, I encourage you to use the link that accompanied this video to watch those episodes. If you are watching on Facebook, you can go to the While You Are Single Facebook page, go to the video section and you'll have access to the previous videos as well. Another option is to go to our website, whileyouaresingle.org, where I have lots of resources that will be able to listen to you. You can also listen to the While You Are Single podcast on the website. Another option is to go to iTunes, simply subscribe or look for the While You Are Single podcast on iTunes and you can listen to it there as well. In addition, um, if you happen to be in the Woodlands, Houston, Texas area, on December the 7th, I'd like to invite you to join me for a Christmas book bash where myself and a host of other authors are going to be signing our books and giving out books as well. It's going to be taking place at Spring Creek Barbecue in the Woodlands, Texas. I believe the address is on the screen. Hope you can make it and stop by and say hi. And without further ado, let's open up in prayer. Father God, I thank you for another privilege to share your word today. Uh, thank you for the person that is watching right now. Father, I ask that you open our hearts to heed your word, open our ears to hear your word, open our eyes to perceive your word, open our minds to understand your word and give us the wisdom to apply your word into our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I have been talking about the process that God takes us through to fulfill our purpose, to find the person that we're looking for as far as marriage is concerned, to accomplish whatever it is God has called us to do. And I elaborated on the five steps that process entails. And the first step is that God sets you apart from some things or from someone or from an environment. The second step is where God sets you down. He causes you to rest so that he can do step three where he sets things apart from you. He takes things from you. He, he, he removes things from you. And, uh, step four is where God sets a part of you or heals you. He brings closure to some things in your life. And step five, God sets you up with the person or the project or the purpose he wanted you to accomplish or to be with. So that is the process. And I mentioned that we don't have to go through all five steps. Um, the number of steps that we go through is dependent on where we are, uh, what our situation is, what our context is, what we're dealing with, whatever the situation is as it pertains to you, it determines how many of those steps uh, we go through. But there are five steps and everyone will go through at least one step. And that's why in Genesis 2 24, the Bible says, for this reason, a man will leave his parents to cleave with his wife. That's a setting apart. Um, as far as marriage is concerned, the least sanctification, the least setting apart, the least separation that you're going to go through is leaving your parents to connect or to cleave or to engage uh, with your spouse. Of course, that doesn't mean you neglect your family, but it simply means that the priority shifts to your spouse. Nevertheless, that is a process. We all go through um, uh, a number of those steps, if not all of those steps. I believe for some of you watching right now, I believe some of you are in step one. God is taking you out of some things. He's removing you from an environment. He's setting you apart from an environment, uh, from a place, uh, sometimes from a person or from a, a host of people that you do not need to be hanging around with. For some of you, you're in step two. It feels like nothing is happening. Um, you're just in a place of rest. God is setting you down. Uh, some of you are in step three where God is taking things out of you. He's renewing your mind. He's taking wrong mindsets and wrong thinking and just bringing things out of you. Uh, some of you are in step four. God is bringing closure to some things. God is healing you. God is closing chapters in your life. 
uh, so that he can take you to step five, set you up. And some of you are in step five. You are on the verge of meeting the person God has for you to marry. Some of you are engaged. Some of you are about to get married. Uh, congratulations. That is the process that we all go through. I want to encourage you to allow God to sanctify you completely. A lot of times we get stuck in the middle. I don't know why, but we get stuck in the middle. We're not where we used to be. Thank God. But we're also not where we need to be. The Israelites left Egypt, but a lot if not most of them did not make it to the promised land. They were stuck in the middle. I want you to allow God to remove things from you. Step three is one of the hardest part of the process. Step three, let God take things out of you. Let go and let God heal you, bring closure, step four, and set you up. Step five, let me give you some examples. I was set apart most definitely prior to meeting and marrying my wife. I was born in Inglewood, California, but I barely spent six weeks after my birth in Inglewood, California. So I have no idea what Inglewood is like or California is like. I know this sounds sad, but I haven't been to California since I left there many years ago. I was barely there for six weeks. And every time, while I'm very proud of being born in Inglewood, California, the truth of the matter is I really don't know much about the place. But what I've heard and seen on television does not cast Inglewood, California in a positive light. If there is truth to the environment of Inglewood, California, imagine if I was raised there. Only God knows if I would have survived. Only God knows if I will be alive now. But God in his grace, he took me out, set me apart from Inglewood, California. My Nigerian parents took me back to Nigeria where I was raised there for 20 years. Then God set me apart again, plucked me out, brought me to the United States via Richmond, Virginia, where I was there for a couple of years. Then God set me apart from Virginia to Houston, Texas, where I currently reside. And once I got to Houston, Texas, about a year later, I meet my wife. But it didn't take until four years later that I discovered that she was my wife. So even though I met her a year after I ended up in Houston, it wasn't until four years later that we began to date. Why was that? Because the sanctification process was not complete. God had to take things out of me, especially the fact that in my mind, I was thinking that whoever God had for me will be someone different from who my wife is today. So God had to take those things out of my mind, take them out of my heart, take them out of my thinking. He had to set me apart completely before I realized that she was the one for me. She, on the other hand, also had to go through some sanctification. Um, she was born and raised in South Bend, Indiana. And if you knew my wife, the fact that she left Indiana to come to Houston, Texas is a miracle itself. But she had to be set apart from that environment to meet me. Imagine if we both didn't leave our comfort zone, so to speak. If Imagine if I didn't allow God to take things out of me. Well, I'd probably be single right now. Not that that's a bad thing. That's a fantastic thing. If you're where God wants you to be when he wants you to be there. So we both got set apart to find and marry each other. Uh, there are other examples in scripture. Perhaps you hear the story of Boaz and Ruth. It's uh, a couple in scripture that you probably hear of a lot when relationships are discussed, especially for single people that want to find the person to marry, as well as some an, um, allusion and references to uh, Boaz being like a, a type or a symbolic of Christ himself. But they both also had to go through the sanctification process to end up with each other. You see, I'm going to start with Ruth. 
You can read her story and her connection with Boaz in the book of Ruth is just four chapters. Uh, Ruth did not have a very pleasant background. She didn't have a very uh, flattering background. Ruth was a Moabite woman. She was from Moab. And let me give you a brief history of the Moabites. Their story actually started in Genesis chapter 19. If you read from verses 30 to 38, you kind of learn the history of the Moabites. In this story, we hear of a guy named Lot. Lot was Abraham's nephew. Lot was stuck in a city or, 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 or an area called Sodom and Gomorrah. You probably heard of um, those cities before. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because they were wicked. They were into evil practices and God destroyed them. But he spared Lot and his two daughters. He could have spared the wife as well, but they were told to leave the city prior to God destroying the city. But And they were told not to look back, but the wife looked back. Then she got you know, she turned into a pillar of salt and that's why she um, wasn't spared. She lost her life. But Lot and his daughters escaped Sodom and Gomorrah. So here they are. The daughters felt like there were no men to marry. So the daughters connived to get their father drunk. And while their father was drunk, they slept with him and they both got pregnant. The firstborn gave birth to a son and named him Moab. And there is the origin of the Moabites. The secondborn gave birth to a son and named him Benami. And they are where the Ammonites come from. But the firstborn was the one that gave birth to Moab. So Ruth is a descendant of Moab who was conceived from an incestuous episode. So that's the background Ruth has. She is a Moabite and the Moabites um, did not serve God. They had paganistic practices. They were an ungodly nation. That was Ruth's background. And while she was in Moab, she married an Israelite man. And unfortunately, the Israelite man died. But in Ruth chapter one, we hear that Ruth left Moab to come to Israel. And that was her step one. She was set apart from Moab to Israel. And it's interesting because in chapter two, she meets Boaz. Just, just, just say the pattern here. She leaves an environment and voila, she meets the man that God has for her. Well, she met him. They had a conversation. They even ate together. They drank together. And she worked for him, and that was it. Nothing more, nothing less. That was it. What's my point? Perhaps you're watching me right now, and perhaps you can relate to situations where perhaps you want to get married, you're looking for a guy or a lady, and perhaps you decided to make some changes, and you, you decided you're not clubbing anymore, you're not fooling around anymore, you want to do things the right way, you begin to pray, you begin to position yourself and, and, and focus more on church-related activities or uh, hanging out with the right people, and voila, you meet somebody, maybe you go for a date. Maybe you have coffee. Maybe you go check out a movie. But that's it. It doesn't go any further. Your phone call is not returned or you're not called for a second date. It stops. In some cases, of course, it simply means that's just not the person God has for you. In some cases, it's because you're not set apart completely. That's why it didn't go any further. Going back to Ruth's story. Chapter 2. That was it. Chapter three starts and Ruth's mother-in-law approaches Ruth and she makes a profound statement. I believe is in Ruth chapter three, verse three. She wanted to hook up Ruth with Boaz and she told Ruth, wash yourself, put on perfume or anoint yourself and put on your best garment. Wash yourself, put on perfume, put on your best garment. I think everybody knows that if you're going to meet somebody, if you're going to go out on a date, you want to uh, find somebody, you want to look good and you want to smell good, you want to look nice. We all know that. That's fundamental. That's basic. And I encourage that. But that's not what I want to talk about. 
Perhaps you remember when I was talking about the different meanings of the word set, I mentioned wash. When I was explaining what sanctify means, one of the words I told you about was wash. The first thing Ruth's mother-in-law, Naomi, told her to do was wash yourself. Furthermore, she told her to put on her best garment. And of course, we know we need to dress well. But beyond the physical relevance of that, I want to reinforce the spiritual significance of that. Remember, I told you that Ruth was married in Moab to a guy who died. And remember, I told you that even though God set you apart from an environment, chances are you carry that environment with you. In Israelite times, in their community, the way a person is dressed is very significant. If you were a priest, you dressed a certain way. If you were a king, you dressed a certain way. If you were a leper, you dressed a certain way. If you were a widow, you dressed a certain way. So when Naomi tells Ruth to put on her best garment to change her clothes, it's not just about looking nice, which is very important, but it includes you're dressed like a widow. You need to shed the widow's garment so that you can open the door for a new relationship to come to fruition. She left Moab, but she carried the stigma. She carried the baggage. She carried the knowing that you had a husband with her in her outfit. And some of you are watching, and one of the reasons that you're not with who God has for you is because you're still carrying that baggage. You're still carrying the breakup. And God is telling you to break up with the breakup. Let it go. Let him go. Let her go. Perhaps you have souvenirs or things that remind you of that person. Things that you've carried with you of that person. If it's a physical loss like Ruth, I understand that. I'm not really talking about that, but I'm talking about just a breakup or something just didn't work out and you're still carrying that with you and that is holding you back from whomever God has for you. You got to allow God to set those things, those images apart from you. Even things that were negative, things that were done or said to you, you got to allow God to remove those things from you, allow him to heal you. While she washed herself, she put on her best clothes. That was her step three. Not step two, but step three. And sometimes the sanctification process, it's not in order. It's however God sees fit. So she did that. Then the next step. Find out next week. Until then, let's pray. Father, I thank you for the privilege to share your word. I thank you for the person watching right now. I pray that they allow you to sanctify them completely and take things out of them that are holding them back from who and what you have for them. Thank you, Lord, for doing this for them and for every one of us, Lord, and just completing the work you're doing in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. Until next week, take care and stay blessed.